good morning. Uh, sorry we weren't live yesterday for our service. So I thought I would pop on and record the message for you so that you didn't miss out on the message that we had yesterday. And here at ECC, since January, we have been looking at the key principles of our vision statement. And they are to seek God, to meet with God and to make Jesus known. Um, and we're currently in the series of Am I Available? Um, so, yeah, we had a great message from Angus last week to start our new series. But I wonder if we have actually taken any time to ponder that question and what it actually means for ourselves. Um, I know over the last few weeks, as I've been preparing for this new series, um, I myself have been particularly challenged about my own availability. Um, what does it mean? What does it look like? What can I learn from the word of God on this subject? And what can we learn from Jesus and how he lived here on earth? Um, and the blueprint that he left us to follow. And, you know, I, I think, am I available? I, I think to myself, yes, I am fully available to God and to his call. But, you know, when the tough sacrifices come, I have had to ask myself what my response is. And do I put boundaries up around my availability or certain areas of availability? Now, I'm not talking about um, being wise um, and uh, taking care of ourselves. I'm talking about whether we're available when God calls. And in the Breakfast of Champions on Thursday last week, Andy Alm said this, and I love it when you're preparing and God kind of underlines and highlights what it is that you're bringing for confirmation. And he said this, yesterday we shared on the importance of responding to God's word and how that, when we give response to it, rather than just read it, we can release its potential and power into our lives and our situations. Wow. I mean, just take a moment to think about that. The importance of responding to the word of God. And when we give a response, so a heart response, rather than just read it in our minds, then we can release its potential and power into our lives and into our situations. I think that's amazing. So much about walking in our God-given destiny is about us responding correctly with due or correct response to God and his word. You and me walking in God's plan for our lives is more about our response or our availability. I added that bit um, to him than his intentions to us. So us walking in God's plan for our lives is more about our response and availability to him than his intentions. Understand that God's intentions for you are settled. He is not confused. And we know that because in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, it clearly says in the word that God knows the plans that he has for us. So he already knows the intentions for your life, for my life. It's settled. It's written. But the fact is that his intentions for us are activated in our lives when we respond to him correctly or make ourselves willingly available. And the Bible is a big old catalogue of people's responses that allows us to see the fruit of the lives of people who responded to God, both correctly and incorrectly, um, who made themselves available and perhaps when it came to it, found themselves unavailable. And their responses should inspire us with ours. And we're going to have a little look at a couple of those this morning. There are so many in the word. It's exciting, isn't it? That God really showed us uh, and gave us a blueprint through the word of God about how we can live available to him. And I want to say this, you know, the power of our greatest potential hinges on one simple thing. Can you believe that? Am I available to God? I don't know. Do I walk in the ministry of availability? And God has a ministry for every one of us, not just the pastor, the leaders, the worship team, but every one of us who knows Jesus, who comes into a relationship with Jesus, has a call, an appointed call of God on their lives. And that means everybody uh, here in this house, everybody watching this uh, on YouTube, if you know Jesus, then you've got a call on your life. 
if you don't yet know Jesus, he still has a plan and a purpose for you. That's amazing, isn't it? He's already got a plan and a purpose for you. So when you come into that relationship with him, he releases destiny into your life. And as we heard in the last series about making Jesus known, we're not all great soul winners, but we all have a part in leading others to Christ. Uh, we're all a link in the chain of salvation in other people's lives. Not all of us, however, are the last link. Uh, for some, it's inviting people to come. For some, it's bringing somebody to come. For others, it's sharing personal testimony, <coughs> teaching, praying, listening, serving and being available. Wow, that's a challenge, isn't it? Uh, whatever ministry God has given you, and he has definitely got a plan for your life, no matter what your skill set, no matter what your age, your best days are ahead of you and God has not finished with you yet. And we all just need to be available to do it. It's simple as that. Jesus was available to minister at, even, at, at any sorry given moment. Uh, and, and he went out of his way to do so. That really challenges me. Am I available at any given moment when the father says to go or to do? And do I or am I prepared to go out of my way to do so? And we know that Jesus goes out of his way to do so because when he met the Samaritan woman at the well, uh, there was a much easier route that he could have gone on his journey uh, and a much quicker route that he could have taken to get there. But Jesus knew that he had this appointed moment in time with this Samaritan woman at the well. And so he went out of his way to do so, so that she could get to know who he was and completely transformed her life and the whole community that she lived in. That's what happens when we make ourselves available. That's what happens when we go out of our way to do so. Before God will use anybody, we have to be available to be used. Nobody was consistently and mightily used by God in the Bible unless they were first making themselves available to him. So here are some examples, just in case you don't believe me. Samuel, in 1 Samuel 3 verse 4, it says, The Lord called Samuel and he answered, Here I am. Samuel was mightily used by God. Why? Well, because he was available. David was mightily used by God. Yes, David made lots of mistakes. He made lots of mess ups, which one of us don't. But he was available to God when God asked him to go, he went. Gideon was available to God. I have no idea what Gideon must have thought when all those men were fearful. And so God said, they've got to go. They're not really available to me. And then he's left with 300 but God had the victory because those people were available to him. Mary, she was the mother of Jesus. And there must have been maybe hundreds or thousands of virgins in Galilee and perhaps hundreds in Nazareth. But Mary was the one who went down in history. Why? Notice what Mary said when the angel told her of her chosen destiny. We read this in Luke 1 verse 38. Then Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel left. Wow. In other words, Mary was saying, here I am, God. I'm available. Is it going to be easy? No, she must have been petrified. It just, it, I can't even imagine. But she was available to God and she trusted him, knowing that he had a plan and a purpose for her. Jesus a great example of uh, availability and he walked perfectly in the will of God. Why? Because Jesus was available. As a son of God, he only wanted to do the will of God. He wanted to be available to the Father in whatever way that the Father wanted to use him. The disciples, well, they were mightily used because they were available. And we looked at this um, a couple of weeks ago when I brought the message in Matthew 4.22, where it says, and they immediately, they immediately left their nets to, to follow him. And so they immediately left the nets that defined their past and walked into what would define their future. They, my friends, were available. Paul, 
when God called him, he was he was the worst person around, killing and putting into prison as many Christians as he could get his hands on. How could God use him so mightily? But we read about that in Acts 9 and we see that Saul encounters Jesus and then makes himself available to him. And boy, was he used mightily by God. Now then, you might say, Pastor Fay, I'm not a Samuel, I'm not a David, I'm not a Gideon, I'm not a Noah, I'm not a Mary, I'm not a Jesus, I'm not one of the first disciples and I'm certainly not a Paul. I'm just me. God can't use me like that. I'm not really an anybody. In fact, I'm a bit of a nobody. And I want to remind you again, something that I said a few weeks ago, and there was this quote, God has a tendency of picking a nobody to become somebody in front of everybody without asking anybody as long as we are available to him for his plans for his purposes and uh, he sure can and he wants to he wants to use you and he wants to use me if we'll make ourselves available you know just like jesus used the little boy to feed five thousand people plus five thousand people plus what did the boy have you know all he had was five loaves maybe we'd call them rolls today and two fishes i don't know maybe you'd call it a tin of tuna but he didn't have much but he was willing to make what he did have available for jesus to use you know he could have looked at that and thought well that isn't enough to feed all these people so i might as well just keep it for myself at least then i'll get fed and i'm not going to get into trouble off my mom but he made what he had available to jesus and he showed how with that he fed five thousand plus five thousand men sorry plus women and children who he was so Jesus took the little that the boy had and he showed all of those people who he was, who his father was. That's amazing, isn't it? Here's a challenge. What have we got in our hands that God is asking us to make available to him so that he can show our world who he is? Wow. Wow. If he can take five loaves and two fishes and feed all those people just so they can see who Jesus is, who God is, what can he do with the little in our hands when we make that ourselves and that available to him? He's going to show the worlds that we live in, that we circulate in, who he is. Not for us, but for his glory. Oh, I think that's amazing. I'm so, I'm so excited by that. I'm so excited by that. Jesus took what he had, what that little boy had. He multiplied it and used it. And, you know, not only was everybody there well fed, there were 12 full baskets left over for the disciples as well. He wanted them to know that when they put what they have into his hands, that he is going to outpour in an in abundance, not just a bit or a crumb, but they were fed. So they, they were full and there was enough left over for them as well. Shall we have a look at another example? Okay, so I'm in Luke 5, um, and we're looking at verse uh, from verse 1. Now it happened that while Jesus was standing by the Sea of Galilee, with the people crowding all around him and listening to the word of God, that he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake. But the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, boats which was Simon's and asked him to put out a little distance from the shore now I want to say here that Simon could have said no he could have gone no Jesus I'm not doing that I'm not doing that but he didn't and Jesus sat down and began teaching the crowd from the boat so here we see that Jesus uses Simon's boat why well of course because it was available uh, it was ready for the master's use and Simon was willing to give what he had, even if it was a dirty, smelly, stinking old fishing boat. God will use whatever we make available to him. Notice here, Jesus doesn't demand the use of the boat. He didn't take it. 
He asked Peter. Peter could have refused. Jesus doesn't force us to be an instrument in the process of making him known to others. He doesn't force us to make our lives, ourselves, our gifts, our talents, our treasures available to him. You know, we're supposed to be a link in the chain, not the missing link. He won't force us. He uses only what we make available to him. Shall we carry on and see what happens next? Okay, verse four. When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, Peter, put out into the deep and lower your nets for a catch of fish. Hmm. Launch out into the deep. So I've, I've made a note to myself here. When we make ourselves available with the little that we have, he will lead us into deeper and greater things. Wow. It starts with the little. When we make ourselves available with the little bit that you and I have, he's going to lead us deeper and he's going to take us deeper and he's going to enable us to see greater things. I... Wow. Don't give up. Let's not give up if we're not winning 10 people for the Lord every day or every month or even every year. You know, don't give up even if you're not trying to win people for the Lord. <laughs> Jesus won't ask you to launch out into the deep until you first go out a little from the land. Notice Jesus uh, went out one part at a time. First of all, he was just a little distance from the shore and then he asked Simon to push out into the deep. And Jesus is going to lead us one step at a time. And, you know, I'm sure we'd all love to be leading 10 or 20 people to the Lord every day. But maybe, just maybe, your ministry isn't the last link in the chain. The reaping part. Maybe the thought of leading someone to Christ makes you say, I can't do that. But maybe as you make yourself available, you're a gardener sowing seeds of salvation into the lives of the people in your world so that whoever's going to be reaping it has the ground well prepared. The key is, my friends, is that we have to just make ourselves available first with what we have. And then we can go deeper and further into him. But what do we have to do first? Well, First, we have to let Jesus into our boats. And, you know, too many people haven't let Jesus into their boats. He's still on the shore. We're glad to let Jesus save us and take us to heaven. But we don't want him in the boat with us. We don't want Jesus to get too involved in our lives. We don't really want Jesus, perhaps, as the Lord of our life. You know, first we have to come to the point where we're willing to be available, to be willing for Jesus to use us, to be available to be in the, uh, a link in the chain of salvation. Notice what Jesus told them to do here in, in uh, Luke 5 verse 4. Let down your nets. You know, if you want to catch fish, you have to let down your nets. I mean, generally speaking, fish don't just come and jump into the boat. If we ignore the lost people around us, they aren't going to get saved. They aren't going to get to know who Jesus is. The reality of the Saviour at work in my life and your life, a God who loves them, who cares for them, whose purpose and plans for them are good. What did the fishermen have available? They had nets. Jesus didn't tell them to use what they didn't have. So Jesus tells them, put what you have available to use. Maybe you don't have very much and that's okay. But what God has given you to use, use it. Make it available to him. Do what you can and watch him work the miracle. You know, Mark, um, Mark 14, Mark tells a story of a woman who took an alabaster box of perfume 
and poured it on the head of Jesus. Some of the disciples rebuked her saying that she uh, could have sold it and given the money to the poor. But listen to what Jesus has to say in Mark 14, verse 4 to 9. We, we will go back to the disciples story in, in Luke 5, but bear with me a minute. But there were some who were indignantly remarking to one another, why has this perfume been wasted? For this perfume might have sold for more than 300 dinar, a labourer's wage for almost a year, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why are you bothering her and causing trouble? She has done a good and beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you. And whenever you wish you could do something good for them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body before the burial. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, wherever the good news regarding salvation is proclaimed throughout the world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. If we don't do what we can do, we'll never launch out into the deep and do more. Don't worry or be anxious about what you can't do. Do what you can do. You know, what if I said, I, I, I'm i not going to preach at all and I can't leave the church because I can't preach or lead like Steve Furtick. Well, we don't need him here in our setting. He's anointed and appointed for his setting. We need what is available to God here. I need to make myself available because there's no good thing in me. But when I give what I've got available to God, he does the rest. We make ourselves available and he does the rest. It's not me or my capabilities. It's him at work through my availability and your availability. It's not me or my capabilities. It's him at work through my availability to him. And it's the same for you. Let's carry on, shall we? So again, we're back in Luke now and we're at verse five. Uh, Simon replied, Master, we worked hard all night to the point of exhaustion and caught nothing in our nets. But at your word, I will do as you say and lower the nets again. Now, this is a verse where doubt tries to sneak in. But listen to this. Obedience prevails. At night, the, the fish are closer to the surface. Perhaps, uh, I don't know, we feel that we've failed God in the past. And I want to say this, don't let that keep you from making yourself available to God now. They'd come in all night fishing with no fish. It was a failed evening. They were tired, exhausted. It wasn't the time for catching fish in the middle of the day. But they were obedient to what God called them to do. Don't let that keep don't let your past failures keep you from making yourself available to God now. This is a new day today. It could be the start of a new season as we make ourselves available to him regardless of the cost. You know it cost Christ everything. Let's not let past failures keep us from going on and moving into his plans and his purpose for today. Don't let things that have been spoken over to you in the past stop you from being available for his plans and his purpose for your life and the life of other people today. I don't know, maybe you're weary of sowing seeds and seeing nothing in return. Well, it's time to make yourself available and cast our nets to the other side. Keep gardening because he has promised us a harvest. And we see here, here is where victory comes. In spite of the fact that I can't see what good it's going to do i fished all night with nothing to show for it i can't see how it's going to work i can't see how you're going to use me god but i'm going to do it anyway why because jesus says so and you know what he definitely knows best he definitely knows best so verse six and seven let's find out what happens then when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were at the point of breaking. So they signalled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled their boats with fish so that they began to sink. 
the the the, the catch is going to be so big that I can't manage it. You can't manage it. We're going to have to call for other people. Come and help. Come and help. But because he gave, because he gave to Jesus what he had, because he made himself and what he had available to Jesus, we see the results. And the results are abundance. More than they themselves could handle. They had to call for help. You know, when we hold back because we don't want to, because we can't, because we're not sure, sure how it's going to work, because we don't see the full picture, because we just want to keep that bit for ourselves, we rob ourselves of the abundant life that we could have in Christ. We rob ourselves, my friends, of the greatest haul of our lives. When we give what we have into his hands, he makes sure there is always more than we need. The picnic lunch, the nets of fish. They could have said, we're too tired. We're too disappointed. We caught nothing last night. I'm not going out again. There's nothing to be caught today. I've got better things to do. I need to see my family. I need to rest because I've got to go out tonight because we didn't get anything yesterday and I've got to feed my family. What am I going to do? But they didn't. They didn't. They they were available. They made what they had available to Jesus. Amazing. You know, here Simon Peter was astonished. And, you know, we will be amazed at what God can do when we make ourselves available to him, even with our inadequacies. You know, the Bible says that in our weakness, he is glorified. We just need to make ourselves available to him to use. I mean, it amazes me that when we give him the little that we have, he transforms that into an abundance. Into an abundance. And he wanted these fishermen to go from fishers of fish to fishers of men and they learned some valuable lessons in the boat that day and we can learn them as well and that is when Jesus speaks we listen where God leads us we make ourselves available and we respond and go and what the Lord gives us we make available to him because he gave it to us in the first place anyway is Jesus in your boat? Or are we willing to sail through life alone? We'll never be blessed unless Jesus is the Lord of our lives. And we're in the boat with him. We need to give our time and our talents and our treasure and our devotion to him. Making our whole lives available to his call and his purpose. Let's not leave Jesus on the shore. We don't want to end up shipwrecked. It's time, church, to invite Jesus into every area of our lives, making ourselves available at the call. And I, I was thinking about um, a fireman, a friend of mine, one of my very, very close friends. We've been friends for ever. And um, her dad was a fireman. And I was thinking about the um, the beeper and when your beeper goes off as a fireman, you have got a certain amount of time to respond to the call. And I always used to remember that beep would go off and he would shoot off the settee and he would be out that door in seconds like his life depended on it because he understood when that beeper goes off, he needed to respond immediately to the call. When he was on call, he needed to be continually available to that uh, to that job, to that call, to that role. Because actually, somebody else's life depended on his availability. So if he ignored the call, somebody's life might depend on that. And I think he had something like three minutes to get to the station. But you could guarantee that he would be there probably within a minute and a half. Uh, he didn't live too far from the station, but he'd have to run from home 
up to the fire station in Market Bosworth. And, you know, just like a fireman who's available to go at a moment's notice because somebody's life depends on it, we need to be available at the call of God immediately because other people's eternal lives are dependent on our availability to Jesus. When we make available what little we have, he's going to lead us into deeper and greater things. And he's going to lead us one step at a time. But we can guarantee the little that we have when we give it to him, there's going to be abundance. If we want to catch fish, we have to let down our nets. We have to make our nets available to him. Remember at the beginning I said the power of our greatest potential hinges on one simple thing. Am I available to God? Just like the little boy in his picnic, just like Mary and Samuel and Jesus and Paul, the disciples, when Jesus first called them. He's calling to us today to move from the shallows and into the deep, to make our lives available to his call and to his purpose, to be like that fireman who is available in an instant when the opportunity arises because somebody else's life depends on you and me being available to Jesus with all that we have. Yeah, Father, I pray that you would help us, you would show us the areas of our lives that we are holding back on, perhaps the areas of our lives where we have boundaries to our availability. Lord, I, I pray that you would challenge us when we say I'm available, but I'm not really available. I'm available here, but I'm not really available here. You can have this bit, but you can't have that bit. God, I pray that you would um, speak to our hearts about the availability of our time, our treasure and our talent. And God, I pray that we would be people that have the little that we have, that we would give the little that we have, sorry, into your hands, Jesus. It might not look like much. The little boy's picnic probably looked like not very much. I'm sure everybody thought, well, that's not going to feed us, is it? But in the hands of Jesus, he worked a miracle to show other people who he was through what the little boy made available. And I pray today for a fresh revelation that when we make available the little that we have in our hands, you're going to multiply it to feed others so that they can see who you are for your glory and for the extension of your kingdom. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that you have enjoyed the word um and that it's spoken to you you can contact us here at the church office if you have any questions about anything that we've talked about today or that i've bought and uh, there's always somebody available to pray with you and to chat with you uh, have a great week and we will be live um next sunday morning god bless bye bye